In this video, we're going to model the back end of our Ferrari 308 in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video we're going to carry on with our Ferrari 308, but this time we're going to model the back end of the car. So as I mentioned, the process that we used for the middle and for the front bumper is going to follow suit on the back. So it's really nothing new, uh, but if you want to follow along, please do. If you want to use your own design, then make sure you follow along with that, or you can go to the description in the video and you can start with what you see on the screen. The first thing that we're going to do is go into box display mode and we want to clean up some of the lines back here first. So in modify edit form, I want to bring some of these lines up. And again, I'm looking for that sort of consistent patch layout. I'm going to bring some of these back. And notice that the car actually begins to roll under. And this is going to be um, something that we're going to have to be mindful of because we're going to need the control in that area. If we go to a smooth display, you can see that we don't really have that. So we can either add more edges in here to get more control, or we can move some of the ones that we have. Moving some of the ones that we have, assuming we have the correct shape on everything else, is going to be the best option. But we have to look at it from the perspective of the shape of the car. And from here, we don't really have the control we need. So I think the best option for us is to create a couple of new edges that will give us the control that we need. Now, remember on the front, we actually had this T-point here, and that worked out okay. So as we're looking at this, uh, we need to be mindful of that T-point and whether or not we simply want to carry that edge all the way forward. Uh, I think it's going to be probably too much control in the middle of the body, but we do have the benefit of already having the shape that we want here. So I'm going to try to add it all the way and just see what it looks like, making sure that I snap to the midpoint of each edge. And again, the reason I'm snapping to the midpoint is because it's going to give us a consistency. And that's really what we're looking for is we don't want a bunch of small faces and a bunch of large faces. So we're going to use that to our advantage. Now that we have that extra control, let's go to the back view, modify, edit form, and notice this time I'm using the edge and not a vertex. And the reason I'm doing that is because I already know that the shape of the back is okay. Uh, I just need to sort of move things around a little bit. So then we'll go to our smooth display. You can see it's not quite there yet. So uh, at this point, this is when I might tweak that edge just a little bit more, maybe in smooth display, so I can see if I'm getting that right shape. And when we transition to underneath of that style line, that's when everything's going to start to roll back under. And remember I mentioned the back of these cars are, are actually fairly open. So if we look at the back of an original car, you can see that it sort of flares out right at the back. And that's something that we can handle, of course, um, but the rest of it is really open. Like this panel here, um, doesn't have a lot of body lines on it that sort of has a little seam on the back and it rolls in and all the rest of this is open for uh, the engine and exhaust and all the stuff that's back there. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to leave it open when we design this. So we're going to carry this panel here down and under a little bit. You can see that it does go under a slight amount. So we're going to carry that down. Uh, we're going to we're going to work with that as our mission. So uh, from here, the next thing that we need to do is begin to create those creased edges. And again, we do not want to carry this creased edge down. So we're only going to select a couple. And I'm going to select uh, these three. I'm going to view it from the back. And again, I'm on a PC, so I'm going to use Alt and Control. On a Mac, you'll be using um, Option and Command. So I'm going to pull this in, let go of both of them, Alt and Control again, pull it down. Uh, again, this is going to be 25, so I'm going to manually enter minus 25, let go of Alt and Control, hold them again, pull it back out, and um, this gives us the geometry we want, but I need to bring that back a little bit more, so I'm going to put minus 5, and uh, actually I'm going to take it back a little bit more than that. I want this to roll under a bit more, so just make sure that it's inside of that. So everything looks pretty good there, and at this point we need to do it again, so um, again, Alt and Control for me, and I'm going to begin pulling this down. Depending on the geometry that we need, 
um, will determine how many of these edges that we actually want to create. So at this point, I'm going to go to a right view. I'm going to bring back my canvases and note that this starts to taper back. So before I extrude anything else, I'm going to start to handle the shape. I'm going to go into box display. It's, it's always a good idea, especially when you're working on complex shapes, to get comfortable working in box display. I want to also make sure that everything is staying as a quad or a four-sided patch. So I am going to work uh, as hard as I can to make sure that's true. Now that I have that shape, let's look at it from the back. That looks okay. So I'm going to double click that bottom edge, hold down alt this time because I want that smooth transition. And uh, I know that I'm going to need a few more at the back. So I'm going to do this a few more times and just sort of pull it in. Okay, so if we view this from the right side, obviously the shape is, um, is not quite where we want it. So I'm going to double click this edge and I'm going to pull that up. I'm going to double click this edge, pull it up. And when we do this, uh, we are going to have to work a little bit. We can scale these down, but really uh, I find it's best to just mess with each vertice. Uh, so I'm going to manually move those and I'll manually move this one up. And then these are actually going to be um, almost behind that. So we'll double click on this edge. We'll, we'll bring it up fairly close and then we'll pull this over. And again, we're, we're getting them relatively close and pull that one up here. But then before I move on, I'm gonna double click that edge and view it from the back. And I just wanna make sure that that edge is rolling in. So then this one here is gonna end up being sort of inside, but we want to make sure again that we mess with uh, the vertices. So we want to pull them into the right place and we want to keep that sort of consistency. You aren't always going to be able to get away with uh, smooth straight lines and uh, smooth patches, but whenever you can, the curvature or the surfaces that you get as a result of it will be much better. And I did mention that Fusion is not really the perfect tool for this kind of modeling. Uh, Forms is obviously a great tool. The T-spline functionality is great. But if you are going to be modeling a car for um, some sort of production reason, it's just not the tool. Um, I mean, there's just no way around it. It's It's got a lot of great features. It just does not have the same level of control that you would get with um, an actual automotive body modeling software. So just keep that in mind. This is a, a fun thing to do, but it's not going, it's not going to be um, a career in auto body modeling and fusion. It's not to say that you can't do it, but the level of control that you have over things like edge weights and the patch layouts, it's just, it just doesn't match what you can do with other software. So at this point, double clicking that edge, we're gonna begin extruding it forward because now we wanna connect it here. So holding down Alt for me on a PC, I'm gonna bring it forward a little bit. I'm gonna let go and do it one more time. Um, and then I'm gonna go back into box display. I like working in box display. What I wanna do is I need to start tapering things how they're supposed to be. So I'm gonna use my weld vertices. I'm gonna bring this one forward to here and this one forward to here to merge that edge. And then I could start manipulating their location with modify and edit form. So remember that we have the crease here. So we need to be mindful of what we're moving. In this case right here, I'm gonna move that vertex and I wanna, maintain the crease position here. I've got an edge that I can't see, so I need to box select. And then um, here, I'm gonna box select everything here and just sort of uh, pull it back and pull it down. Um, a lot of times what you'll see is there'll be a little bit of a flare and it's almost like a mud guard uh, to protect the body. And you'll see those flares happen right at the wheel. And um, again, just gonna move some of this down to get the right shape. And then I want to move some of this forward. So I wanna take this edge and I'm gonna control select that one. And I wanna pull it forward to about where it's supposed to be and pull it up and then box select this edge here. And again, I'm sort of looking to make a straight line um, to make the geometry work how I expect it to. 
All right, so let's go back into smooth display and let's just take a look at what we've done so far. I'm gonna hide the canvases and um, just take a look at the way that that rolls under. So I don't have one of these cars, so I obviously don't know for sure, but when we're looking at images, that looks pretty good. It probably has a tighter crease on this edge. And the way for us to, to do that is to pull two of these edges closer together. So for example, um, this edge here, if I pull that edge closer to this edge, I will get a tighter crease. So you can see here, uh, as I'm doing it in smooth display mode, I'm getting that tighter crease. So this is gonna be a little bit more realistic uh, because it does roll under the body uh, you know, right there. I also wanna move this in, it doesn't look quite right. And uh, you know we could sit here and we could um, spend a lot of time doing this, but so far that looks pretty good. Now is the time when we need to um, add additional edging on the back. So from the back view, Again, Alt and Control, uh, if you're on a PC, I'm gonna scale this in. I'm gonna go back to box display mode, and then I'm gonna begin working on each of these vertices. Remember, I'm only working in plane. Now, when I say in plane, I'm moving in X and Z right now, which means I don't have to worry about these scaled edges moving forward at all on the car. I only have to be concerned with um, maintaining the position and the thickness of this lip that I'm working on. It gets a little tricky around here, um, so we might need to rotate it uh, to see exactly what we're working with. And what I think I'm going to do um, is actually use weld vertices, and I'm gonna pull these together into a triangle. Um, pull this one to there, and that will allow me to maintain that crease, and, and I'll have the crease on the side, but it'll sort of fade away uh, as it gets to the back. And I'm gonna scale it down just a little bit. Um, and there you go. So you can see that we have a smooth inner lip, but then it sort of fades away. So now I can bring this edge in a bit. You can take this vertex in. Um, you have to be careful when you're box selecting. Sometimes, uh, especially if there's geometry in front of something, uh, you wanna be extremely careful that you don't accidentally box select a whole bunch. And there are selection options where you can select through or determine whether or not you don't wanna select through something. Uh, in this case, select through is on by default. I'm gonna bring this one down a little bit and then this one will just come over. And then we can bring this whole edge in, bring that vertex in. All right. So remember that had a crease on it. If we go back to smooth display, now we've sort of um, finished off the back of the car. It's open, we can add um, bumpers, we can add the panel with the taillights and so on. Um, but that has allowed us to sort of finish off the back of the car. If we get rid of our edges, um, you can see that there's this weird crease that happened where we sort of um, tapered back. That's something that we need to fix. Um, but everything else looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the results. So I'll go into modify. I want to take um, this, this, and that edge and simply pull it in. Take that vertex and pull it in. And then take a look at it in smooth display. Probably wanna take a couple more things in. I'll probably take this, uh, these couple faces and just pull them in. And the car does have a lot of curvature, but um, when we're looking at it, we don't necessarily need it to go in and out. Uh, it doesn't flare out at the back end. It sort of um, pulls in. So a lot of this stuff, uh, so for example, this vertice here, we can pull these in and get it to sort of flare how we would expect at the back. So we look at it from the top. What you would want to see is you would want to see it sort of taper in. And you can see right now it's, it's sort of in and then out. Uh, so that's something that we we certainly don't want. A lot of times these are easier to see when you're in box display mode, which is always a good thing to go back to. I'll pull this in. And again, what we're looking at is a smooth transition. So we will always want to be mindful of these transitions and get comfortable going back and forth between smooth display. So that looks pretty good. Uh, this corner could probably use some more work. If I view it from the back, maybe want to pull some of these vertices out and pull this edge in 
and then always check it from multiple views. So when we're looking at it from the side, it might be okay. Smooth display, that looks okay. From the back, it looks a whole lot better. It looks like it's tapering in like it should. So I'm pretty happy with that. I didn't fill in the rest of the fender, but at this point, I mean, that's something that we've done on um, the back of the midsection and the front of the midsection. We didn't connect the front bumper um, or this rear piece. Uh, so that's something that you can certainly play around with and see if you can uh, see if you can get those areas filled in. It's the exact same process we've already done, so I don't think there's really any um, big reason to show it. Uh, but at this point, we have got the vast majority of the body done. Obviously everything but below the midline. Uh, so in the next video, I think what we'll do is we'll start modeling the hood, um, the roof, I'm sorry. We'll start modeling the roof and the pillars and figure out how to connect it back to the body. So I think that's gonna be the next challenge. But at this point, obviously make sure that we save. If you have any questions, let me know. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.